who is the council general in the count, uh, general consulate in uh, Chicago. He and his team are here to kind of get your ideas and uh, information and to try to see if we can more effectively work together. Mr. Hung has been in a variety of government posts, a very impressive resume and career uh, in uh, federal service for the Chinese government. And so too long to <laughs> illustrate, but definitely would love to have you here and thank you very much. So let's all give a warm, warm, warm Minnesota welcome today for Mr. Hung. All dear friends here, Happy New Year of Rooster. Thank you. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to join you here for today's uh, event. Uh, this year is the year of Rooster, and in Chinese culture, it stands for diligence and hard working. So, actually, my purpose here is to join you so as to join hands with you to strengthen our bilateral relationship, especially in the trade and investment field. This year will be a very important year for the Sino-US relationship. You have a new government. Uh, we, this, and for China, this is the second year of the 30th, uh, five year plan. So for China and the United States, we think we are now the two largest economies in the world, and uh, our cooperation, our exchanges could have the utmost important bearing for the international community, for the world future, and the human being's destiny. So we think it is very important for us to keep this very important relationship on a healthy and uh, Steady check so as to make our two peoples to benefit from it. This year is also the 38th year of our diplomatic relationship. 38 years ago, we established this very important time between our two great nations. 38 years ago, although our leaders from the two nations were wise enough to break the ice between our two countries and establish this very important time. But they could not have predicted China-US relationship could make so big strides in the last four decades. Let us give some reflection for what kind of cooperation and exchanges we had 40 years ago. At that time, actually, the trade volume between our two countries was just one billion. US dollars every year. And uh, there was no, I think, bad bilateral investment between us. Only about 10,000 people traveling across the Pacific annually. And you could not find any Chinese students studying here in your universities. But what's the situation nowadays? Last year, we had a total trade volume around 520 billion US dollars. Total bilateral investment, the two-way investment stock, reaches 200 billion US dollars. Five million people travel across the Pacific annually. So that means for every day, 25,000 people are traveling between our two countries. 300,000 Chinese students are now studying in your universities, accounting for one-third of the total international students here in your great universities. And the Chinese students actually the number one group of international students. So this is really something we have to cherish. I mean, for this two great nations, we have so sound a strong and strong bilateral relationship uh, foundation, we should maintain it 
we should streamline our system and the policies so has so that we can give even strong impetus for this kind of very important topic. So today I would like to uh, give you our observation into our bilateral economic relationship and also our thoughts for continuing this kind of very important economic time within the United States so as that we can have more consensus in building a even stronger relationship between our two countries. Uh, talk about is the um, general economic and the economic cooperation between our two countries. Our economic exchange and exchanges and cooperation has deepened and broadened continuously in a wider range of between China and the US, highly interdependent today. Our two-way trade, as I said, has increased by 211 folds, reaching 520 billion US dollars in 2016. The US is now the second largest trading partner for China, just behind the European Union. And the US is actually the number one exporting par uh, economic partner, trading partner for China, so far as country is concerned. And ranks world's first in importing from China and fourth in exporting to China. China is, the, is now the largest trading partner of the US and ranks world's first in exporting to the US and third in importing from the US. The bilateral investment between China and the United States has developed significantly, reaching more than 200 billion US dollars in accumulation by the end of 2016, of which there are 670,000 US investment, investment projects in total in China, with an aggregate investment of 79.8 billion US dollars. Investment of Chinese companies in the US has increased at an even faster pace. China's direct non-financial investment in the US amounted to 45.6 billion US dollars last year, reaching a record level high and almost uh, a, rec a record high and almost tripling that of the year of 2015. <coughs> Cumulative Chinese direct investment in, in the US economy since 2000 now exceeds 100 billion US dollars to 109 billion US dollars, creating more than 100,000 new jobs for the United States. We're also seeing good momentum of the cooperation conducted at the subnational level of our two countries over the recent years. Deputy Director Dieter just introduced the cooperation between Minnesota and China. Both sides have recognized the important role of US trade and economic cooperation is playing at the subnational level. Up to now, 25 provinces and cities in China have established seven joint working group, groups with six US states and one city. They include Michigan, uh, Iowa, the city of Chicago in my district. These groups have been working on building new platforms in various economic and trade areas, covering technology, environmental protect, protection, education, medical care, culture, and etc. And I think the positive achievement made in the economic relationship between China and the United States has brought tangible benefits to our two peoples. According to a recent report, 
on understanding the U.S.-China trade relationship released by the U.S.-China Business Council based in Washington, D.C. China purchased 165 billion U.S. dollars in goods and services from the United States in 2015, representing 7.3% of all U.S. exports and about 1% of total U.S. economic output, which supports 1.8 million new jobs in the United States. The total number of economic benefits generated from United States investment in China and the Chinese investment in the United States added amounts to 2.6 million U.S. new jobs. 2.6 million new jobs for the United States and 216 billion US dollars in the US GDP. I had, uh, I have, in my district, we have several multinationals uh, here. I visited the Boeing headquarters in Chicago and they told me nowadays. Around two airplanes are produced, manufactured in their civil aviation uh, manufacturing plants in Everett, Washington State. And one of them is sold to China. And I went to Iowa, and the governor of Iowa, your newly nominated US ambassador to China, Mr. Brandstad, he told me 20% of their cotton and 56% of their soybeans produced in Iowa are exported to China. Chinese manufacturing also lowered prices in the United States for consumer goods, dampening inflation and putting more money in American people's pockets. At an aggregate level, U.S. consumer prices are 1% to 1.5% lower because of cheaper Chinese imports. The average U.S. Code, US household earned about 56500 in 2015. Trained with China, therefore saved up to 850 U.S. dollars that year for these families. In recent years, we have heard misconceptions that U.S. interest is hurt due to its bilateral trade deficit with China. We believe this misconception has misguided the view of many American friends towards the U.S.-China economic relationship. As a matter of fact, based on the development trend of China-U.S. economic relationship, the U.S. is positioned to gain more. On one hand, U.S. exports to China has huge potential for growth. According to the report on U.S. states exports to China 2006 to 2015, released by the U.S.-China Business Council, from 2006 to 2015, exports of U.S. goods and services to China continue to outspace exports to other major markets, of which U.S. goods exports, exports to China increased by 115%, more than to any of the other top U.S. goods export markets. From 2006 to 2014, U.S. services exports to China increased by more than 300%. While U.S. services exports to the rest of the world increased by 91%. As the Chinese economy has transitioned into the new age, the size of and the purchasing power of the Chinese middle class are growing continuously. These consumers will demand more of the services and higher-end products that American companies export. 
there is ample reason to believe that U.S. exports can grow even more rapidly, and U.S. firms can gain significant revenues from their investments. By 2050, it is expected that U.S. exports to China will rise to more than 520 billion U.S. dollars. It is important to note that there is great potential for the U.S. to further advance its service exports to China. It is well recognized that the U.S. is the most competitive service exporter, exporter in the world, especially for capital-intensive, technology-intensive, and high-value-added products. With the further opening up of service sector in Chinese market, this is our national strategy. U.S. exports as well as investment in China's service markets will step up into a period of great development. As well re recognized, service sector is the key strength of U.S. economy and creates most U.S. jobs. We believe the economic cooperation in the service sector between China and the U.S. will bring great benefits to U.S. economy. On the other hand, China has been increasing its investment to the U.S. over the past few years. And this has brought substantial job opportunities and tax revenues to the U.S. According to a report of Rodium Group based in New York, the United States became the largest recipient of booming Chinese outbound foreign direct investment in 2016. With 45.6 billion U.S. dollars worth of completed acquisitions and greenfield investments. This has tripled the amount of 15 billion U.S. dollars of 2015 and represented a tenfold increase of annual investment just five years ago. The mix of industries targeted by Chinese investors also expanded remarkably in 2015, uh, 16. More than 90% of Chinese foreign direct investment in 2016 here in the United States targeted U.S. services and the manufacturing sectors, which actually is in line with your national strategy to reinvigorate your manufacturing sectors. So further expansion of Chinese investment in the U.S. in coming years is highly expected. By 2020, it is expected that the Chinese investment will create 200 to 400,000 U.S. jobs. I paid a visit to a company based in Michigan called Next Year. In 2010, a Chinese company acquired that company, Next Year, and then the total employees there were 3,000. Last year when I had the visit, the manager there told me that the total employees rise to 5,000. So we believe cooperation is the only choice for both China and the United States in the field of economy. China and the United States share common interests, and our two economies are structural, uh, structurally complementary. And cooperation serves the best interests of our two nations. China-U.S. relations are increasingly interconnected, and it has become clearer to us that both countries are deeply involved in others' economic fabrics. It is important to note that China and the United States share highly complementary characteristics in a number of areas, which include industry structure, natural resources, human resources, markets, capital, and technology. Taking industry structure as an example, the focused sector allocation between China and the United States is clear and vertical. The U.S. is currently positioned as the high-value-added end of the spectrum, 
while China is at the other end of the spectrum. The strategic synergy far overwhelms the potential conflicts of interests. Accordingly, to further develop the China-U.S. economic relationship serves our common interests. Today, the U.S. and China are the top two economies in the world, and the strategic direction of our relationship has huge influence on the global economic landscape, and our improved cooperation would positively drive the growth of world economies. The U.S. as the, world, as the world's largest developed economy and China as the world's largest developing economy are the new engines for the global economy. As President Xi Jinping pointed out in his congratulatory, uh, congratulatory message to President Trump, there are multiple areas that China and the United States could, could and should work together from coordinating the global macroeconomic policy making to promoting the world economic governance, China and the United States are playing a vital role in worldwide peacemaking and promoting global growth. And our interests are deeply intertwined. The deepening of China-US relationship serves the interests of human beings, conforms to the trends of our times and is all means irreversible. With that, we think a potential trade war between China and the United States will hurt both countries. Our, neither of us will gain from this kind of trade war. So here we would like to share with you, our friends, some proposals for strengthening China-U.S. economic cooperation. As a major pillar of our bilateral relationship, the China-U.S. economic relationship has been the anchor for the broader China-U.S. relation. Both sides should abandon the mentality of zero-sum game and join forces to realize the strategic win-win for China and the U.S. In this context, we share the following views on forging an even stronger China-U.S. Economic, uh, economic cooperation in the future. First, we should proactively promote the bilateral dialogue. dialogues for our two great economies, we think it is very normal that some problems will uh, arise during our cooperation. That doesn't matter. We think the most important thing for us is to set up dialogue mechanism so as we can settle, find solutions to this kind of problems through dialogue so that our two countries' interests will be coordinated and our good momentum of economic relationship could be moment maintained. Second, China and the US need to further open up to each other. According to our estimation, China will import around 8 trillion US dollars of goods in the next five years. And we will make foreign, we will make for investment around 500 billion US dollars, uh, 700 billion US dollars in the next five years, and around 750 million Chinese people will make outbound visits. So this could be great opportunities for countries like the United States. Our two countries need to further open up to each other in both trade and investment. China is sincere in further opening up our market. China is deepening integration with the world economy with deregulation in many areas to improve access for foreign investments. Recently, the State Council, the State Council issued a circular that provides measures 
to boost foreign investment as part of an effort to build a new open economic system in China. By doing this, China is planning to further streamline government administration, improve regulations, and reduce business transaction costs so as to create a favorable business environment for foreign investment. Foreign investment is encouraged to take part in many areas, including financial services, service, infrastructure construction in energy, transportation, water conservancy, environmental protection, and so on. Right now, China is engaged to finalize a high-standard U.S.-China bilateral investment treaty. We encourage reduction of trade and investment barriers and support concrete actions from both sides to develop a level playing field for all companies in China and the U.S., which will allow the commercial relationship to reach its full potential and bring greater benefits to each country's economy. Of course, we also expect that the same would be done by the U.S. side. China would expect the U.S. to further lose its export control on China. To solve the structural imbalance of China-U.S. trade requires further liberalization, not tightening control of exports from the U.S. to China, particularly in the field of high technology products. China would ex expect the U.S. government to further consider China's concerns and promote high technology exports to China for civil purposes. Third, China and the U.S. should reinforce subnational cooperation. Since the establishment of diplomatic relationship between China and the U.S., regional level cooperation has been an important building block in terms of supporting the national level relationship. In recent years, there has been strong momentum of collaboration at the subnational cooperation between our two countries in a number of sectors, including clean energy, information technology, biotechnology, and medical devices, just name a few. Minnesota is one of the leading states that possess a large GDP, diversified economy, rich agricultural resources, and clear competitive edges in food processing, new material design, medical devices, and medical devices, etc. There is great potential to work with China on a broad range of opportunities. We hope to work with the state of Minnesota to further explore opportunities in agriculture, biotech, healthcare, and advanced manufacturing equipment. <coughs> On one hand, we would like to facilitate increasing exports to China from Minnesota. On the other hand, we also will encourage Chinese companies to invest here in Minnesota. Of course, we welcome your companies to have more investment in China. Fourth, China and the United States should promote economic globalization without hesitation. Global trade growth has been sluggish over the last several years. In many countries throughout the world, we see increased economic nationalism and anti-globalization. And we see huge domestic pressures for localization of production. Those pressures occur in the state in the United States, China, and many other countries, creating uncertainties for the global economy. Globalization may have some adverse impact on certain sectors and groups, but we believe that to address this downsides, we must rely on continued globalization, trade liberalization, and investment facilitation. China stands firmly with the World Trade Organization and the multilateral free trade agreements designed to be inclusive. China wants to work with the U.S. to continue to advance trade liberalization and advance globalization as appropriate. As our President Xi Jinping states in Davos 
recently. From the historical perspective, economic globalization resulted from growing social productivity and is a natural outcome of scientific and technological progress. We should adapt to and guide economic globalization, cushion its negative impact, and deliver its benefits to all countries in the world. China is ready to work with the United States and the state of Minnesota to further unleash the potential in our bilateral trade and investment cooperation. We would like to join hands with you to make concerted efforts to build a more open global trading system for mutual development. Thank you very much.